In this video, we'll calculate the volumes of solids of revolution. A solid of revolution is a three-dimensional object that can be formed by rotating a region of the plane around an axis. Volumes formed by rotating a region of the plane around a line are called solids of revolution. In this figure on the left, this three-dimensional object is formed by rotating a region of the plane shaped like this around the x-axis. The solid on the right can be formed by rotating a crescent-shaped region of the plane like this, again around the x-axis. If we slice these two solids of revolution using planes perpendicular to the x-axis, on the left side our cross-sections look like disks. A disk here means the inside of a circle. The figure on the right is different because it's hollow inside, and when we slice it by planes perpendicular to the x-axis, we get cross-sections that are shaped like washers. A washer here means the region in between two concentric circles. So for solids of revolution, the cross-sections can have the shape of a disk or the shape of a washer. The area of a disk is given by the familiar formula, pi r squared, where r is the radius, and the area of a washer can be written as pi times r outer squared minus pi times r inner squared, where r outer is the radius of the big circle and r inner is the radius of the little circle. This formula works because the area of the washer is just the area of the larger circle minus the area of the inside smaller circle. Now we know that the volume of any solid that can be sliced into cross sections using planes perpendicular to the x-axis is given by v is the integral from x equals a to x equals b of the area of the cross section at point x integrated dx. If our cross sections are disks, this formula becomes the integral of pi r squared dx, where the radius r is a function of x. If instead the cross sections look like washers, then the volume formula becomes the integral of pi r outer squared minus pi r inner squared dx. Again, our outer and our inner are functions of x here. These formulas work when the solid of revolution is formed by rotating a region around the x-axis or any horizontal line. When we rotate around a horizontal line, then our cross-sectional disks or washers are perpendicular to the x-axis and are thin in the x-direction. So it makes sense to integrate dx. If instead we want to rotate around the y-axis or a vertical line, then our disk or washer cross sections are going to be perpendicular to the y-axis and are going to be thin in the y-direction. So when rotating around the y-axis or a vertical line, we'll need to do our integral with respect to y. Our cross-sectional area will be a function of y, we'll integrate dy, and our bounds of integration will have to be y values. Our formulas will look pretty much the same. We'll just have to calculate our radii and bounds of integration in terms of y instead of x. As our first example, let's consider the region bounded by the curve y equals the cube root of x, the x-axis, and the line x equals 8. We want to find the volume of the solid of revolution found by rotating this region around the x-axis. Our cross sections here are going to be disks, and these disks are thin in the x-direction, so we're going to be integrating dx. Our smallest x value is 0, and our largest is 8, so those are our bounds of integration. And we want to integrate pi times the radius squared dx. Now the radius of our disks is given by the y-coordinate on this curve. So we can write r is equal to y, which is equal to the cube root of x, 
according to our equation. So we can rewrite the volume as the integral from 0 to 8 of pi times the cube root of x squared dx. I can pull out the pi and rewrite this integral using exponents and integrate and then evaluate using bounds of integration to get 3 fifths pi times 8 to the 5 thirds minus 0. Now 8 to the 5 thirds means 8 to the 1 third raised to the fifth power. 8 to the 1 third is 2 and 2 to the fifth is 32. So this expression simplifies to 3 fifths pi times 32 or 96 fifths pi. As our next example, let's consider the region in the first quadrant bounded by two curves. The curve y equals the cube root of x and y equals 1 fourth times x. We'll start by rotating this region around the x-axis to get this sort of hollow vase shape. Notice that our cross sections this time are shaped like washers, where the outer circle of the washer is swept out by the curve y equals cube root of x, and the inner circle is swept out by the curve y equals 1 fourth x. We know our volume is given by the integral of pi times r outer squared minus pi times r inner squared. And since our washers are thin in the x direction, we know we'll need to integrate dx. Our bounds of integration are just our lowest x value of 0 and our largest x value, which is where these two curves intersect, which is an x value of 8. We can confirm that the two curves intersect when x equals 8 by setting them equal to each other and solving for x. Dividing both sides by x to the 1 third and multiplying both sides by 4 gives us 4 equals x to the 2 thirds. And raising both sides to the 3 halves power gives us x equals 4 to the 3 halves or x equals 8. This confirms we have the correct bound of integration here. Now we need to figure out a formula for the outer radius as a function of x and a formula for the inner radius also. Since the outer circle is swept out by the curve y equals cube root of x, the outer radius is just given by the y-coordinate of this curve as a function of x, that's the cube root of x. Now the inner radius is given by the y-coordinate of this line, and the y-coordinate of this line as a function of x is 1 fourth x. So we've set up an equation for the volume of our solid. And a routine computation gives us a volume of 128 fifteenths times pi. Now let's switch gears and rotate this region around the y-axis instead. Our cross sections are still washers, but this time the washers are thin in the y direction. So we're going to be integrating with respect to y. Our bounds of integration are also y values and start at the minimum y value of 0 and the maximum y value of 2 that corresponds to this intersection where x equals 8 and y, which is the cube root of x or 1 fourth times x, is then equal to 2. For this problem, we need our r outer and our r inner to be functions of y. From the picture, we see that r outer is actually the x-coordinate on this line. The line has the equation y equals 1 fourth x, and so x is equal to 4y. So that gives us our r outer as a function of y. To find r inner, we can do the same sort of thing, using the x-coordinate of the curve y equals cube root of x, but writing that x-coordinate in terms of y. We have y equals the cube root of x, means that x is equal to y cubed, and so r inner is equal to y cubed as a function of y. Putting this all together, we have an equation for volume. 
we can simplify this and integrate to get an answer of 512 pi over 21. In this video, we calculated the volumes of solids of revolution using the disk and the washer methods and the following formulas.